challenges and the barriers that is stopping women and girls with disabilities from enjoying health right. And the second objective is to come up with actions, recommendations, strategies, or a framework on ensuring that women and girls with disabilities enjoy equal rights when it comes to issues of reproductive rights. Introduction. SGBB, which means sexual and gender-based violence in Nigeria has been on the rise over the last two decades. Perpetrators of SDG are mainly relatives, spouses, friends, teachers, or religious leaders. running on SGBV statistics. SGBV and COVID-19, according to UN Women's Brief Report, there is increase of number of reported cases of gender-based violence from 23 states in Nigeria between March and April 2021. We got this statistics from Federal Ministry of Women Affairs and UN Women. COVID-19 and SGBV. The SGBV crisis in Nigeria has been heightened by the COVID-19 pandemic. At the beginning of the lockdown, there was 56% increase in cases of SGBV across the country. The perpetrators of these cases of SGBV are mainly close relatives or friends. And women with disabilities experience more violence during the lockdown. There are some definitions here, which some of us are already aware, the meaning of disability and types of disability, like intellectual disability, um, physically challenged, hearing impaired, and so on. So I'm going to talk about traits of LGBT in Nigeria. What is trending? What is happening? What is the current affair on SGBD in this country? One in every three women in Nigeria has experienced some sort of physical or sexual violence or both. Most cases of SGBD, especially in local communities, are underreported. And do you know 55% of women and girls who have experienced SGBV have never sought for help, according to National Population Council in 2018. The Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, VAP Act, is yet to be domesticated in 22 states. Gombe State has the highest prevalence of SGBV, and yet, to demonstrate the VAP or Child Rights Act. While women and girls with disabilities are disproportionately affected by LGBT, sexual violence against men and boys also occurs, particularly in conflict-affected contexts. This statistics is gotten from UNFPA and IPP 
year, 2017. SGBV and the disability community. Women with disabilities are three times more likely to experience physical violence, sexual violence, and emotional violence than persons without disabilities. Women with disabilities in particular are up to 10 times more likely to experience sexual violence, 40% to 68% of young women with disabilities will experience sexual violence before the age of 18. Economic dependence, weak legislations, and irresponsive law enforcement agents are key drivers of LGBT among the disability community. While women and girls with disabilities are at a higher risk, Women and girls with disabilities are mainly abused by their caregivers and therefore fail to report due to fear or loss of care and support. Weak legislation systems, the VAP Act is yet to be domesticated in 22 states. I mentioned that earlier. Communication barriers. Deaf women or girls always find it difficult to communicate with health professionals and to also report cases of SGBV to the authorities due to lack of sign language interpreters, accessible format of um, information available to them. Women and girls with disabilities may not possess the physical strength to fight off their attackers. Economic dependence also places them at the mercy of their guidance. Data on women with disabilities. Data on violence against women and girls with disabilities are largely lacking, making it difficult to assess the prevalence of this violence. It forms levels and determinants, such as what types of disability are more subjected to violence, who the perpetrators are, in which geographic locations, among others. Data on women with disabilities still. Nevertheless, the different stakeholders agree that violence against women with disabilities is more prevalent compared to violence against males and females without disabilities. And do you know that women with disabilities are two to four times more likely to experience intimate partner violence We have a lot of challenges that women and girls with disabilities are experiencing in this country in the context of sexual reproductive health rights and LGBT. Women and girls with most types of disability experience different levels of vulnerability and marginalization due to a range of complex factors related to the composition of society, the prevailing culture, the structure of service delivery and discrimination on the basis of disability, violence and gender. Women with disabilities find it difficult to report cases of SGBV to the public or service providers. This is a big challenge to CSOs working on prevention and protection of survivors of SGBV with disabilities. And some of us that are here should pass the message to other women with disabilities that whenever they experience an attack, they should call the authorities and report to them. We have phone numbers available at the Ministry of Women Affairs, Social Development Secretariat, Dorothy and Germansley Foundation, 
the Nidari Foundation, and so on. So don't be shy to report your case, because after reporting, you will get support, economic support, um, and sexual reproductive support. So please, stop keeping quiet. Stop being silent about it. Speak up and let everybody know about what has happened. Women and girls with disabilities are the group most vulnerable to violence compared with their male peers with disabilities, as well as with girls and women without disabilities. Well, disability may lead to increased violence. Violence, in turn, may cause a new disability or may aggravate an existing disability and increase the severity of one's vulnerability. There is increase of violence against women and girls with disabilities in Nigeria during pandemics. And women with disabilities experience more cases of various forms of psychological, social, physical, and sexual violence. Still on challenges, societal perceptions of women with disabilities as asexual, only one respondent of the Philippine study recognized that women with disability are as likely as women without disability to have sexual desires and experiences and those need sexual reproductive health services. Girls and women with disabilities were seen by respondents as at fault for unwanted or unplanned pregnancies despite their perceived low level of sexual reproductive health rights. Access to comprehensive sexual education and information on sexual and reproductive health information is limited for women and girls with disabilities. It is very scarce. It's unavailable. You hardly get it. Girls and women with disabilities are often denied access to child and youth friendly disability inclusive sexual and reproductive health services. I will never stop sharing the story of a woman with disability who was pregnant. She went for antenatal. But because the entrance of the hospital is inaccessible to her, staircase everywhere, this woman fell off from her wheelchair. And that was how she lost her pregnancy. In the presence, of medical professionals. She started bleeding after the fall, and that was how this woman lost her pregnancy. That is why I'm proud of Kelly and her team on the work she's doing on access to sexual reproductive health rights for deaf women. Another big challenge is lack of capacity to provide disability inclusive service, services, provision, including how to communicate with PWDs with emphasis on women and girls with disabilities. They have limited access to resources for disability inclusive service provision, such as accessible facilities. Religious convert, conversations are also a big barrier to access to services to women, including those with disabilities, preventing access to SFH, information and services. Lack of mobility of girls and women with disabilities and financial dependence, which makes paying for health services an accessible um, facility a big challenge. Significant obstacles and challenges remain in place, primarily in the form of unique protection systems.
system for women and girls with disabilities. The absence of law, legislation, and pub public policy that will ensure their access to justice, limited service delivery to survivors of violence. Another challenge is failure to understand and respond to special needs of women with disabilities, survivors of violence. In addition to the fact that this vulnerable group is usually disregarded at the level of national and sectoral plans and overall policy directions in Nigeria, healthcare services and facilities are expensive and inaccessible to women with disabilities. Lack of ability on part of the survivors of violence to access information, programs, and services from the different agencies and service providers in relation to prevention of violence, protection, recovery, and others. Effective case reporting. How do you report your case? your case accurate? Is it accessible? Do you follow step by step to ensure justice is served to the victims or to the survivors? Our systems, our facilities, are they special? like the police, the judiciary, the courtrooms, hospitals, and other agencies handling these cases. Are they doing what is right? The back act we are talking about, is it domesticated? All these sensitive questions are very, very important when you're reporting your case. Effective case reporting should include the whole processes involved from the time a complaint was launched to the time a victim received justice. It is a combined effort of the victim and her team or his team, the intermediary CSOs, private individuals, firms, ETC, and the authorities, that's government, take note of this effective case reporting. These are some pictures of an advocacy work during International Day for Women in March 2019. Yeah. So members of Network of Disabled Women, this was facilitated and supported by Fred. Fred is Foundation for Resilient Empowerment and Development. And they are being funded by EU United Nations Spotlight Initiative Project. We are women too. Disabled women are women too and they have right to sexual reproductive health. We want our space, and we want our rights to be given to us. This one says, end all forms of violence against girls with disabilities. This was a press conference facilitated by Fred, implemented by Network of Disabled Women. I am a girl with disability. I am a nation builder. Give me an equal opportunity. Recommendations. We should take actions that enhance the protection 
and care system by developing a clear national strategy for the protection of women and girls with disabilities, survivors of violence, and enhancing the relevant laws, public policies, and operating procedures, raising their level. We should also ensure a quality service delivery in all our action plans and facilities by taking all the required procedures and measures to ensure beneficiaries access to information, protection programs, and services offered by the public and NGO sectors, law enforcement bodies, and justice institutions. We should implement the national policy on sexual and reproductive health and rights of persons with disabilities with emphasis on women and girls with disabilities, which was developed and launched in June 2018 by the Federal Ministry of Health. The implementation of Section 5, Subsection 21 of the discrimination against women with disabilities um, against persons with disabilities prohibition act should be prioritized by all stakeholders. The proposed interventions also include enhancing the capacity of beneficiaries and different stakeholders to engage in efforts to combat violence and report the different cases of violence. Developing the capacity of staff and working teams to offer disability friendly services, providing an inclusive and accessible environment in service delivery points and institutions. We should also offer referral and sheltering services to survivors of violence and organizing community based campaigns and initiatives to address the root causes of violence against women with disabilities, including gender inequality and discrimination on the basis of disability and gender. Still on recommendations, prevention and protection responses and services should be accessible. Income and economic empowerment should be strengthened. Safe spaces, referral and GDP centers should be affordable, accessible, and inclusive. Invest in the lives of survivors of women with disabilities through education and life skills. Parents and caregivers should be supported. In conclusion, let's join hands to end all forms of sexual gender-based violence against women and girls with disabilities in Nigeria. And GBB now. I appreciate you for listening. Thank you.